Hey, and welcome to every SAT Desmos math hack. Trick number one is on solving equations, and I'm sure most of you know how to do this. You're getting out your pencils and papers, and you're saying minus 4x squared minus 7x equals negative 36. Okay, let me factor this. Let me do the quadratic formula. You're going to move your 36 over to this side, right? But it's really simple with Desmos. Desmos is just an OP tool that I've been using for like seven years now. And so now that it's on the SAT, it's amazing. All you have to do is type in the left-hand side and your right-hand side, as you can see. So negative 4x squared minus 7x on one side, and then y equals negative 36 on the other side. And as you can see, Desmos is going to plot this for us. And those two intercepts where your red and blue line intersect, those are your solved solutions. So x is equal to negative 4, comma, 2.25. Those are your two solutions to this equation. Next is solving systems of equations. This is where you have two equations and normally you have to do your substitution or you have to add and subtract these equations together and try to combine them. Desmos, you just type in both of them. I know this is a pretty simple one, 4x equals 20, like yeah, but you can literally just type these in. One equation, second equation, look at the intercept and that's your solution. Boom, x equals 5, y equals 8. Now, before I continue with the rest of the tricks, this video, I'm really just trying to keep it as efficient as possible. I respect your guys' time. So I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment down below for the algorithm so that this video goes viral instead of the random other SAT guide videos. Next, let's talk about finding intercepts. Now I've already started to get into this, but let's say we have an example question. Negative eight times two to the power of X plus 22. And we need to know the X and Y intercept. This is basically where X equals zero and Y equals zero, right? You can just type it into Desmos once again. You can do f of x equals, put in your equation. The thing that intersects on this y axis, right? And the thing that intersects on this x axis are your y and x intercepts. This is, it's really that simple, right? You just, right here, 0, comma 14, your y intercept, 1.459, comma 0, your x intercept. And there could be multiple, of course, depending on the equation. Next, minimum and maximum. You guys already know how to do this pretty much. You just type it in once again, look at the minimum value. In this case, you know, there is only a minimum. There's like two maximums because they go like all the way to infinity or whatever, or they don't even exist. So you just say the minimum is right here. But as you can tell, very, very straightforward to use. Let's get into something a little bit more complicated though, inequalities. So as you can see over here, let's say we get the inequality y is less than six x plus two. And so I've looked through the SAT questions and usually what they do with inequalities is they give you points and they ask you, are these points solutions for this inequality? And so usually you'd have to like plug them in and see if it satisfies. But now with Desmos, you just put in your inequality. That's step number one, just type it in. And as you can see, it gives you this line uh, that it's dashed, right? Cause you're not including those points, but you include everything after that. Cause it's a, a less than, not like less than or equal to. Then you go to the table you, there's a plus icon, click on that, press table. And then in the table, you have X1, Y1, type in the points, right? So from over here, 316, 528, 740, put in those points. As you can see, they're getting populated up on the right-hand side over here. Um, and so those points are getting plugged in. And as you can see, they're solutions because they're included in the green section. Before we continue on with the rest of the video, I do want to talk about this video's sponsor, Aceley. Aceley has been a huge supporter of the channel, and as you guys know, the best way to improve your SAT scores is simply to practice. People will spend thousands of dollars on expensive tutoring over the summer, but they're not willing to just put in the work to do practice questions on their own instead. But Aceley makes this really easy because they have the largest question bank for the SAT, as you can see, or 4,000 questions. This lets you crush both module one and module two. I know the SAT has changed to the digital SAT and Aceley is on top of that. In addition to this, they have multiple different modes as you can see over here, you have the practice mode. You can practice questions with your AI tutor, um, kind of like ChatGPT, but embedded in this and like gives you the actual questions for this. So it's just step-by-step. Step. You can just keep going through these and really grind them out. In addition to that, there's also the diagnostic mode. This I think is really helpful because I know a lot of students get really anxious about the SAT. Um, tons of students I always see are commenting in my comment section saying like, oh no, I have my test in a month from now. I'm so anxious, I'm so stressed. This kind of gives you like a diagnostic score of what that would be. And they give you 10 full length timed practice exams. So you can really lock in, mirror the actual testing environment, which is going to help you a lot. 
Um, so as you can see, the, the return on investment here is just way more than what you would get from paying thousands upon thousands of dollars in some sort of prep course over the summer. Uh, you know, you, you have your tutor built in here, you have the practice exams, so you can really lock in and, and practice all of these things that I just talked about with those math questions. So if you're looking to just really grind out those practice questions, which I think is the best way to improve on these tests, they're not really testing upon like how smart you are, they're testing upon just really being able to practice and do a ton of questions, then Acely is a great option. Start with a free trial, you can pick your subscription later and use the link in the description for a discount as well. Moving on to the next section, how many solutions? So sometimes you'll get questions where they give you a system of equations and they'll ask you how many solutions are there? Is there zero, one, two, three, so on. So as you can see, once again, we can just plot these two and rather than just reading out the value like, oh, this is X equals whatever, we just look for the number of times they intersect. And Desmos has this neat little like grayish dot that shows you how many points would be intersecting. So there's one in this case, there could be more if we saw more here, if it's like some sort of parabola, right, across this X, uh, X plus 20 line, you have a, an, a parabola on top of that, right, you're gonna have two intercepts there. Now, this type of question is also interesting. You have how many solutions, but this time with constants. So as you can see, it's like four X minus nine Y equals nine Y plus five, and then H Y equals two plus four X. Um, so this is pretty disgusting. <laughs> it's an annoying system of equations, but as you can see, uh, we need to find the value of H such that there's no solution to the system. And I think students will often get really confused, like, wait, how do I solve that? Desmos allows you to solve the value of H, it allows you to also find when there's no solution, it, here's how you can do it. Once again, type in those two equations, but this time when you type in the letter H, it'll create a slider for H equals zero. It'll just start at H equals zero. Now you have your lines, and this blue line here is assuming that H equals zero. But as you can see, it intersects with the red line. That's a solution, but we want a system where there's no solution. So what value of H do we have to do for that? Well, what we can do is we can drag around this slider. And if you zoom out over here, you'll see that it's still intersecting. So this is not ideal. And what we can do is to click it, to, to make it expand beyond H equals 10, you can click on it and it'll allow you to change the, the range for what H is equal to. So as you can see, now we can zoom out even more, keep moving it around. And there we go, that's pretty much parallel, right? There's now no solutions to the system because these lines never intersect. And that value is h equals 18. Boom, we got the problem right. Next, evaluating functions. So this is where you have like f of x equals e to the power of x plus 4x squared. And it's like, what is x equals 3? Right, and you would have to plug it in. What is e to the power of 3? You're going to do it on calculator. Then 3 squared is equal to 9 times 4, 36. You add those together, right? But this is a complicated process. In Desmos, you type in your function, f of x equals e to the power of x plus 4x squared, and then you do f of 3. And this is literally kind of like the, the plug and chug thing that you could probably do on your graphing calculator as well. But let's face it, I'm pretty sure all of you in this Gen Z digital age, and probably some Gen Alphas coming up pretty soon, who are sweating this out in middle school, preparing way in advance, right? you guys can literally just type this way faster than you would on your graphing calculator. So Desmos just speeds this process up a lot. Um, F equals three, or F of three equals 56, and we have our answer. Regression. This is a really hard concept that uh, I think I probably didn't learn until maybe my junior year of high school. So it, it is a difficult concept, um, but don't worry. Desmos makes it easy. And so typically for these types of like regression problems, Desmo, uh, the SAT will ask you for finding a line or finding a solution, um, an equation, that will satisfy a couple of points. So as you can see, the points they gave us were 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 7. So in Desmos, we can hit the plus icon and create the table, just like how we did for the inequalities, right? So you have this table. And then to do the regression, you do Y1, and then you type in this tilde, tilde thing, squiggly line, and then you do MX, one plus b and as you can see it will fit the line to the data points that you provided uh, so let me just fast forward over here and as you can see it's now fit on the line and it tells you the value of m and b as regression parameters like right over here it shows you m and b 
So now we can just create our line y equals 2x plus 1, right? Because it's mx plus b, so 2x plus 1. And as you can see, that purple line also satisfies those dots. So it is the correct equation. Now we have equivalent expressions. So there's some questions where they're going to give you a list of expressions, like four different expressions. And they're going to say, which one of these is equal to this? And normally we have to, you know, some will do plug and chug, some will try to algebraically prove which one is equal to which. In, in Desmos, this is just super easy. And I'm not even going to show you this one because you can literally, once again, just type these expressions out and then look at which one overlaps, right? And that's the equivalent one. Now equations of circles. This is a little bit more of a complex subject because you don't get into circles like hyperbolas into like later algebra two type of thing. And so as you can see over here, um, we have our circle plotted, the circles and you know ellipses and hyperbolas and those things, uh, they'll, tip, uh, they'll typically you know satisfy these sort of wacky equations where instead of the y, y equals mx plus b, you have this different form of x squared plus y squared equals one, or like x over three squared plus you know y squared over three plus, you know, those types of equations. So you would just plot in your equation just like how you would usually do. And now you can use these like written kind of uh, equations over here, like expressions. So you, one option is you could literally just look at the circle and it's a kind of like a graph paper, right? So you can see that spot with the one that's the midpoint or the, the right distance, right? You just look at it. But alternatively, you can use this sort of expression where you do midpoint, open parentheses, you type in your first point, so zero comma one, comma, and then your second point, and the same thing for distance. And um, as you can see, it kind of gives you the answer. So the midpoint, it'll put that on in red over on your Desmos graph. For distance, it will um, actually just tell you the distance on the left-hand side over here equals two. Mean and median, it's a similar thing. So as you can see, you have your mean and your median, you put in the points and it'll tell you the answer. But there is a little bit of a more complex mean and median question, which is they'll say, you know, Sally on her homework scored a 60, a 70, and an 80. The class mean is this, you know, what is the last score on her fourth exam that she would need to like make the mean this, right? And so for those types of questions, you can actually use X as an input to the mean or median and it will plot that line. So as you can see, as X increases, the, the mean value of your set also increases. So at, at six, your mean value is like 4.1 or 4.2, whatever that is, right? And so it'll keep increasing. So if they ask you, what is the value that Sally will need to bring the mean up to four? Well, you know, X has to be equal, it looks like to five, right? And so you can kind of see that on that line. This is probably the last very complex subject, which is domains. And so domains, you know, they restrict the bounds of like what your X value can be, right? And so as you can see, uh, we can actually represent this in Desmos as well. Um, and you can use this little squiggly square back bracket notation. So rather than the square bracket, if you do shift on the square bracket on your keyboard, it'll put that little squiggly line in there and you can do you know, A is less than X is less than B. So, you know, the, the bounds of X are from negative two to one. And as you can see, Desmos will only graph that section of it. So that's domains. Now I have some more tips on concepts like parameterization, which are less common on the SAT. And those can be found on my website, rishabacademy.com slash SAT. But you should also definitely check out Aisley, as I mentioned before, thanks to them, they're a huge sponsor of the channel and I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Best of luck for your SAT, digital SAT, and please consider subscribing to boost this video in the algorithm. And finally, I also have a video on the SAT grammar rules where I go through all of them just like this. So feel free to click on that or head in the description below. All right, see you guys.